So let's get started. Now, I am in the mission, Vikram Rajan, and there is only 23 minutes left. But I'm going to show you that you can definitely do it solo. Let's go ahead and equip my food. And let's get this party started. So I'm in the new ship, the Garuda. I'll show the build at the end of this. But first, I want to show you that it is possible to solo him. And I want to explain the mechanics. So to start off with, we want to absolutely destroy him. We want to absolutely just hit all these weak points as much as possible. And get him destroyed for the first turn. Right, now that he's been destroyed, he will come back, but he's going to come back stronger and there's going to be towers. Now, I want you all to know that you don't need to worry about the towers just yet. The towers you only need to worry about when that bar above his health bar is full of yellow. So literally completely ignore them towers and just destroy him. So we can see right now he's got no shield. So why he's got no shield, just shoot him and get him gone. Remember this is me doing this solo. I'm gonna take a hit here. I need to try and get the front end firing at him, because that's what I'm gonna do my damage because that's six long guns. It does take a while to turn around this Garuda. So these that he does shoot out can turn into shields. Now I can't do anything to him while he's got that barrier up unless I go in. So the optimal thing here I could really do is start shooting his towers, getting them gone. Or I could go and get inside of his zone and start shooting him. But these towers are going to feed his shield. As you can see at the top, his shield is getting fed. He's about to blow, so I need to put a shield down to stop myself from getting a toxic effect. Now, I might accidentally move out of my shield here. See? So, in the bottom left, you can see that I've got the toxic. The only way to actually get rid of that is by using a kit, which is kind of flipping annoying. Now, I don't have to continue shooting the shields here, um, or the towers, because he's not got full shields. So that means he can still go ahead and take damage. The only time you have to shoot them towers is once his ship is fully shielded. Then you have to destroy them towers, otherwise you can't do any damage to him. So we're just going to keep working away at him. We're just going to keep working away. Right now he's got that up. Let's start shooting these again because he's about to get to full health. Right, he's going to start pulsating. Because he's starting to pulsate, we're going to shoot that over me. And that, and then we're going to just sit in this until that pulsation goes. Oh! I, it landed on me, so I'm not in the shield. But we can see we're in the shield effect there. So now, you can see the toxic effect did not hit me. He's no longer pulsating, but he is at full shell, uh, shield. But there's no towers. These are going to really hurt. So I need to be careful with these little ships. See, he can't take any damage. Oh, he can. I'm destroying his shields when them towers are up, which is bizarre. So normally that is not the case. But I didn't get any warning then for his um, toxic to come out. What I am going to do is I am going to just go and use a repair kit to block that. I'm just going to keep pumping away at his shields. As long as it lets me take down his barrier, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep shooting at him. Now, if I see him pulsating again, then I'll make sure I go ahead and obviously protect myself from that. But he's not, so we're good. Let's try and get the front end pointing at him. Then we can get all of these long guns firing at him. There we go. He's back to taking damage. 
Right, he's put his shield up. Do we now want to start destroying these? And we want to get ourselves a little one of these down. My shield is working. Nice. Hopefully I'm in it. We can see that I am in it. And now that it doesn't attack me. Perfect. Got it exactly how we wanted it. That was perfect execution. Let's just keep working away. See, he's down to half health. Might as well pop the restoration kit. No, he's put his shield up now. Let's go ahead and take out these towers. Let's go and put this down. We can see we're now inside of that shield. So when he pulsates, we will be protected. Okay, he's done that. And now we can get back to absolutely blitzing him. Go over this wave. Alright, his shield's up. Where is the towers? Did I accidentally destroy it? I did. That's not what I was meant to do. If you do accidentally destroy your shield, and then you want to hit one of these and get inside of it. Oh, I think I was too late. I was too late. So we're going to have to use a restoration kit there. Let's take down these towers. That's that one gone. And do be careful, don't get underneath them. The only time I normally die is when I'm underneath these. Okay, now he's going to start hitting me with a lot of toxic. So this is actually a problem here. Because I've messed up. Because I've now got 20 seconds to wait. You can reduce the amount of damage it does. Make sure these don't hit me. They will cause more toxic damage. Right, here we go. We can restore that. Brilliant. Now we need to find out where he is. There he is. I mean, it's just shoot him down. We're probably going to go down here. He's about to pulsate, so I'm going to shoot this. Get myself in that shield. I didn't manage to get inside of that shield. And we've got toxic damage on us, which is not a good start. I don't look like we're inside of it. Yes, we are. Let's just protect ourselves for a moment. Let's hit ourselves with this one. Let's get that healing up. We're just going to protect ourselves for a moment. Okay, we managed to deflect that. Right, let's wait for this shield to disappear. Right, let's start shooting him again if we can. It's not letting us, so let's get a shield over us. Okay, good. We are protected. And it's now letting us hit him.
Okay, we're going to have to take a little bit of damage here, but we got that shield down. Right, there we are. Let's shoot him again. Let's get a shield on. Did it protect us? I think it did. Where are you, Vikram? We just need to make sure he doesn't get another shield. And there we go. That's us killing Vakram, or Vikram, Vakram, Vikram Rajan solo. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me uh, just basically yeah, explain. So as long as he's got no shield above his health bar, you can kill him. If he's got a shield above his health bar, you have to destroy the towers. Other than that, it's as simple as that. Let me go and show you the build. Okay, so here we are back at port. Let's show you the build and the ship that I'm using to kill the new Vikram Rajan. In the dangerous mode, solo, so the level 16 one, and we can see that it was that, so we go to manage cargo, and we go down, we can see we've got the Vikram's locker as well. When the towers go up, that can only be done in the hardest one. That's what I got out of the locker, as well as, obviously, the silver and the other bits and bobs. Let's go and chuck this all in my storage. These dolphins are flipping annoying. Um, right, we chuck that in there. Okay, so the ship that we are using, you've probably... Uh, presumed that is the new ship the garuda and i've got it upgraded to level six out of six so thank you spins as well for some of the parts to help me get that to level six while i was crafting them he managed to lend them so here we are in the details so what does the new ship garuda do and obviously how do you obtain it well in order to get the new garuda you need to go to the smugglers pass and in the smugglers pass if you look at the top left you've got the bonus rewards explore the bonus rewards if we click on that um here no why is it doing that Okay, click in the left stick, sorry, I weren't meant to hold it in. And I go all the way over to level 45, tiers unlocked. Uh, you then get the blueprint of the Garuda, the Worm Drive, Wood Pitch, and Rim's Breath. So basically, getting your Battle Pass to level 45, or oh boy, uh, inserting 45 points, you get it. You get the Garuda unlocked. You've obviously then got to go and craft the blueprint, blueprint, blueprint that costs a certain amount of materials. So that is the uh, Garuda, but let's just show you what it does. So here in the ship list, we look at the Garuda and we'll open up the details. So it is a DPS ship, so it's specialised in dealing damage and status effects. The DPS favours an aggressive playstyle. Uh, it's got the perk Dead Eye, weapon damage increased based on how far you are from the target, capped to 80%. Um, piercing weapons deal 20% more damage. When your whole health is 40% or lower, you get increased armour by 1,000 and trimming no longer costs stamina for 10 seconds. This effect has a cooldown of 40 seconds though. It's then got the revolver perk once you get it to level 6 or rank 6 um, and it's increased weapon damage by 30% when hitting a target with punctured and the long gun is no longer a top deck only weapon when equipped at the bow. Long guns equipped at the bow will deal 10% less damage and 20% longer reload times. But... Guys, there is a way to offset that, and that is with certain furniture. And I don't know what's happening with my voice today. I keep saying words that just are not even English, so do excuse me. Uh, you probably do understand. If you don't, then let me know in the comments down below, and I'll try and help you out. So, coming to the weapons of the ship, for the front, we have got the Picari Freeze. They hit the most damage. Obviously, as we can see there, the Divine Thunders only hit 5,201, whereas the Picari's hit 5,478. And we have got six long gun slots at the front, providing that you've got the ship upgraded to level six. It's got toxic freeze, so hits from this weapon, saps crew stamina, adds 20% damage that cannot be blocked by bracing, which is really good. So when he is bracing slightly, you are punching through a little bit more damage. And it's got piercing too, so that's 20% of damage. Just piercing damage increase damage to weak points by 75%. And as you know, he hasn't really got that many weak points after you've destroyed them all at the start. Um, so it's pretty darn um, good to just have this. And be able to do a lot more damage, especially through his bracing. Then we've got the Divine Funders. So it's got the Heaven's Eye. Hits targets, uh, hits to a target's weak point. Have a 35% chance to summon a Devastating Lightning Strike that deals 3,000 electrical damage. 
uh, and I've got them all the way around to, to the rear, so left, right, and rear, but the front, we've got the Picari Freeze. And then for the auxiliary, we are using the Blight Keeper. In order to unlock the Blight Keeper, you need to complete the story missions, and then once you've completed the story missions, you will get the blueprint, and then you need to just craft it at the uh, weapons craftsmanship, the blacksmith. Um, and the Blight Keeper, what it does is it deploys a boy shield that creates protective dome that is weak against piercing damage. Now, this dome shield really, so far, uh, to my testing, is only good against this boss, but you're basically going to need it to be able to do the boss solo. You don't. I've actually done it with healing boys, um, but you ideally want it because you've obviously got the boys that you can shoot out in the sea and put them domes around you. Then the armor I am using is the Black Prince. Now, it is debatable because potentially the new armor, not the Pesacha, the Tan Nasha could be better for this. Um, but I am using the Black Prince. But the reason the Tanasha could be better is because it's got Dark Meditation. So while bracing reduces the duration of negative status effects by 10% of their maximum durations every second. It's also got Reinforcer, reduced damage taken from Puncture status effects by 25%. But we're using the Black Prince because it's always nice to have that extra um, resistance when you are lower health. So reduces damage taken by 40% when whole health is less than 33%. Then for the furniture, this is where it counters everything that were the negative effects on the ship so reloading and damage so we go into the furniture this is a pve build this is not a pvp build uh, i will have to make another version for pvp but we can see it's got the chulin's guidance as my major furniture so hitting a weak point increases the damage dealt by the next weak point hit within eight seconds by 30 percent increases damage to weak points with front weapons by 12 percent and reduces reload time of front weapons by seven percent so immediately there we're increasing the the damage um, of weak points from the front weapons because we know that we have got a damage reduction of 10% and reload reduction of 20% but here we're counteracting that with a 7% reload so now that reload time is only down by 13% but if we go over we can see then we've got the charge stores the triggering storm struck on a target increases the next attack damage by 50% and increases charge rate of a blaze by 10% on targets with storm struck and increases electrical damage by 5% so the cannons on the side are doing a lot more damage and they've got a chance of doing extra damage once the storm struck is done the blade bringers ward is the other thing that counters the front weapon so the reason we got the picari freeze on the front is because for one we got the children's guidance which gives us the reduced reload time of front weapons by seven percent uh, and then obviously increases weak point damage from front weapons by 12 percent but the picari ward has got reduced reload time of toxic weapons by 15 percent so we're actually getting still an additional two percent reload speed on front weapons so it's completely counteracting everything that was negative on the front and then obviously we got increased damage from toxic weapons by eight percent so um we're only two percent under on damage on the front right now from its negative ten percent but we counted that using the front powder keg so increased front weapon damage by ten percent so in theory we are eight percent more damage on the front weapons and we got eight long guns so that is pretty darn naughty we've given ourselves a little bit more support and health um, as you can see, our health's gone up, but we've got the beam supports on, increased max hull health by 7%, and increases armor rating of equipped armor by 7%. Beam supports are really good to have. And then we've got the La Potence schematics, which increases damage to weak points to enemy ships by 10%, reveals weak points on the fleet of pestilence. Guys, I am sorry about my voice, um, and maybe you hear me breathing a little bit heavier, but I have got a very blocked nose, and I have done for about the last month. I'm trying my best to bring this content out to you. Hopefully, this is a good video. If you want any more videos like this, please let me know in the comments down below and what other videos you might like like this, and I'll try and bring them out to you as soon as possible. So this is me, Solo and Vikram. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Leave a like. See you in the next one. Peace.